Welcome to Disciples Net Church. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. Feel free to join in with hymns, pray with us, and share in communion. Wherever and whenever you are joining us, God's Spirit and people from all over the world are here with you. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. Will you join me today in prayer? Loving God, we come to you today knowing that we are weak and sometimes lose our way. We rely on our own strength, refusing to admit that only your power and love can carry us through the difficult times. We ask that you forgive our weakness and that you will be present with us as we come to you now in prayer, and that you will stay with us through the week to come. We remember before you now those who are suffering. Be with those who are injured, ill, and those who are close to death. Let your love and compassion enter into their hearts and hold them near as they bear the burden of bodies that are broken. Send them a healing spirit to strengthen them in their time of need. For the lonely and depressed, we ask that you send light and hope. Let your Holy Spirit uphold them in the darkness that they are facing. Help those around them find ways to bring peace to them. We remember also those who live in war-torn places. They need your solace, Lord, and we pray that you will meet them in this dark hour. And for our broken planet, we pray that you will find a way to create a passion for peace in those who would injure those of your children who are not like them. Where natural disasters are causing suffering, we call you to abide with your people and provide them with the means to recover from the catastrophes that have struck them. For all of us, your children, we ask that you stay always close to us, even when we forget to find you. Laugh with us, cry with us, shelter us, walk with us in darkness, push us to do more than we believe is possible. Give us compassion for all. Be our ever-present strength and guide in all that we do, in all that we see, in all that we feel, in all that we hope, in all that we dare. We ask these things in the name of your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Our scripture lesson today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. 
Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter said to Jesus, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Feed my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter said to Jesus, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to Peter, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to Peter the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After this, Jesus said to Peter, Follow me. May God add his blessing to our reading and understanding of this holy word. Today I'm going to revisit five post-resurrections of Jesus Christ. Now, you may find yourselves in one of these, uh, uh, one of these uh, scenes that we look at. Let's call it Easter uh, 2.0 or uh, Easter page 2. And if you find yourself in one of these scenes, will you imagine Christ at the edge of the shoreline of your life and your circumstances, beaconing you to himself and at the same time, being present and moving towards you. Now, first there is Mary. Mary teaches us that resurrected Jesus can meet you in your grief. Now, this Mary was a, uh, 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 was a gal from whom Jesus had cast seven demons. Now, I uh, readily admit this morning that I don't know how much about uh, casting out demons. I have been in some circumstances where I, um, I have sensed terribly present operation of evil and it's not nice. It's not nice at all. It had been told us in some way that one of Mary's demons was quote unquote her promiscuous life. Maybe another demon was severe depression of some um, other evil spirits and of this we do not know clearly. But this woman, this woman who had seven of these evil things, influences attached to her life, met Jesus. And when she met him, suddenly things changed. And he cast out those evil spirits from her life. She was a new woman. She followed him all over, all around. She stretched after him. She was caring for him. She would go out of her way to minister to him in any way that she could. She had a great depth of gratitude. She followed him to the cross. We don't know how many uh, uh, women were there at the cross that day. 
and it must have been a pretty uh, uh, gruesome sight. But she had been forgiven much, so she followed him there. Then she goes to the tomb and she is weeping. The real word here means wailing. It wasn't just tears. It wasn't just tears, but she was broken inside with tremendous grief because this man who had healed the one she had become close to, ministered to, received ministry from him. He was her savior and now he was dead. She goes to the tomb and she weeps there. Now, you see, there is a bit of Mary Magdalene in each of us because when we are uh, overcome with grief, we need assurance that Christ is calling out our name and that's all took in Mary's case. He just said Mary and that's all it took. Do you hear Jesus calling out your name? And then we come to the tomb and two men are on their way to Emmaus following the uh, uh, crucifixion. They teach us that resurrected Jesus can reveal himself to you personally. These two men had a seven mile walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And Bible says that they visited everything that has happened. Their world fell apart. It was a cataclysmic event to have the Savior whom they, whom they followed and put their trust in and all, of, and all of a sudden, poof, he was gone. And they didn't know how to put all that together. They, re they, they, they rehearsed all details. Jesus come. Uh, there asks them what they were they are talking about and they say everybody knows what happened in Jerusalem and you must be a dumb one uh, uh, on, only a, a person uh, who doesn't know everybody knows what's been going on so he proceeds to explain to them the scripture now there is a little bit of Emmaus travelers in all of us. We talk about Christ or at least God along the way, but only, tr but only truly see him in the simplicity if he is giving us common bread. They were sitting at the table and all of a sudden, when he broke the bread, they knew it was him. When Christ gives himself, he says, I am the bread of life. When he breaks himself for us, we know it. I don't know how to explain that. But when Christ breaks his body, breaks himself, whether it is in communion or elsewhere and say, uh, here it's me, uh, we know it. And in dusty travels of our life, we do not need to know that kind of experience of Christ coming alongside and in the common things of life. Christ says, I am here. Maybe you are in that part. You say, I am not grieving, but just alongside of my life and I am discussing lots of stuff and I have lost hope of connecting with Jesus and uh, I need him. Uh, these two were not really looking for him. They had lost hope. But he comes and reveals himself to them. Now, there are disciples. A group of them. They meet together and they teach us that resurrected Jesus can dispel our fears 
about the future well there is lot around about that these days isn't it pick up your newspaper or watch your newscast and the sky is falling there is no doubt about that and the armageddon is just around the corner which it should be <coughs> but the fear mongers among us are present everywhere these guys here it was sunday evening jesus had jesus had risen from dead on sunday morning and this was sunday evening and they were huddled together in a room they were locked there in a room because they were because they were uh, afraid of jews not all of jews but they were afraid of religious leaders uh, religious leaders jews because lot of jews had followed jesus they were afraid of the religious leaders of the day because they thought they might be the next now if they have killed the number one guy then you have to root them all out so they had hid themselves in that room they were mobilized by fear but the one who had conquered what they had not appears in the room christ had conquered fear and he appears there is a bit of huddled disciples in all of us we are perplexed about the past we are uncertain about the present we are afraid of the future and christ said to them and he says peace be to you here they were in so much fear and jesus comes and says at e- and, and and says at ease peace and then he breathes on them and says receive the holy spirit one of the great antidotes to fear is the presence of the holy spirit what more power could there be to dispel fear from uh, fear than presence of god's holy spirit in our lives fear about the past the uncertainty about the present the unknown future and he says ha receive the holy spirit and then there is thomas thomas that we read about in the scripture earlier he wasn't there in uh, in that sunday night meeting he may have thought that that the other disciples were playing a joke on him he didn't want to believe them although he could see that the other disciples were changed persons he wanted to see jesus himself and there is nothing wrong in that nothing wrong in that but in all our doubts we must leave enough room for faith for doubt is not opposite of faith but apathy is there are many thomases among us although we live in proximity to jesus we act like thomas seeing jesus in the lives of others is just not enough for us we must put our hands in in his sides to us jesus says come put your hands and feel my wounds and then he says blessed are those who do not see but yet believe and finally there is this fish story fishy fish story night fishing peter tripping off to the shore he say he, uh, he's safe and saved this time because the water is uh, uh, shallow uh, 
morning breakfast of uh, fish peter's peter's uh, cross examination jesus calling him simon son of jonah he remembers roosters and confesses to the lord friends you see we sometimes act like peter too we do not want to identify ourselves with other believers are you in that place today no matter what place and situation you are in can you hear god's voice calling out your name maybe you are in a grief death of a loved one a dream a friend a job or a marriage that has died then there is cancer and other deadly diseases we just uh experience covid-19 your dreams are gone he calls out your name and he says i am here that's all it took for mary for the ones on the road to emmaus for the disciples for thomas and for peter just the name few and immediately they all recognize who it is who jesus is when jesus calls out our name we know who it is he has built us that way jesus is enough Like our preacher, my mind goes back to that, that moment on the seashore when the disciples saw Jesus and recognized that Jesus was there again, still, and was making ready to receive them and meet with them and eat with them and comfort them and guide them and take them on to that next step, whatever that next step might be. We reach a similar moment here where Jesus, as our host, welcomes us to this table to remember all that Jesus has done for us. That even death was, was not too great a price to pay that we might have a relationship with him, with God. But then beyond death, to continue to be with us, to continue to be our host, to continue to welcome us in, to continue to guide us, to continue to lead us forward. As we gather at this table, let us remember Jesus, our host, and look for that guidance that he will give us to move on from here. Let's pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you. We thank you for this, this table, for the fact that we know that your love is stronger than death, for the fact that we know that your love will let nothing stand in the way of a right relationship with you. We thank you for your continued presence. We thank you that you welcome us as the host of this table. 
we thank you that we can look forward to for the rest of our lives. Your hand on our shoulder. Your word in our minds and in our hearts, guiding us forward. As we take this bread and this cup, symbols of your great sacrifice, help us also to be filled with your Spirit, that as we move on, we are empowered to be your presence in a world that so desperately needs you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. And so it is that we remember on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, and when he had blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat this. This is my body which is broken for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, This cup is a new covenant which is poured out in my blood. It is for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you drink it, remember me. And so the table was set, and all was ready, and our Lord calls you, come, join the feast. experiences that uh, we have are wonderful, but they aren't enough until Christ calls out our name. It is my prayer, it is my prayer for us that may we hear that voice and feel his presence. God bless us. Amen.